Hello, I'm CJ McKinney. This free movement video is going to take you through the online application process for settled status for EU citizens. This is a scheme under which almost all EU citizens living in the UK, with very few exceptions, must apply to stay here after Brexit. Now, I'm assuming that if you are watching this video, you know roughly about the settlement scheme and are just here for a look at how it works in practice. But if you do want to read up on who's eligible and things like that, head on over to freemovement.org and take a look at the article that is now showing on your screen. It's called How to Apply for Settled Status for EU Citizens. And that is written by Nath Gabikpi, who is a solicitor specializing in immigration law. What I'm going to do in this video is just have a step-by-step -step walkthrough of the online application, or at least as far through it as we can get. It is in two parts. The first using a smartphone app and the second stage using an online application form. So I'm going to start right from the beginning. You are sitting at your computer thinking I ought to apply for settled status. Uh, what do we do and where do we go? Well, let's do what people might naturally do, which is just pop EU settlement scheme into Google. And the first link that comes up is this link here, settled and pre-settled status for EU citizens and their families. Gov.uk looks pretty good. So we'll click that. Uh, here you'll see a lot of information on the government website about the settled status scheme. Um, information that you ought to consult if you haven't already. But if you just want to crack on and do it, you can go down here to apply. <coughs> Excuse me, click show. And there is a link here for apply to the test phase of the EU settlement scheme. Now, the government is describing the settlement scheme still as a test phase at least until 30th of March 2019. That is despite the fact that it is now open to all EU citizens with a valid biometric passport, which is hundreds of thousands of people, at least, um, an enormous test. But nevertheless, that's what they're calling it, and you don't need to worry about that terminology. That's what you do want to apply to. Um, if you're applying today, after 30th of March, it will presumably no longer say test. And the information on this page confirms that during this so-called test phase, you must use the EU Exit ID document check app on an Android phone as part of the application process. After the 30th of March, there will be options to post your documents away or to visit a various locations around the UK to have it scanned. But for the time being, you must use this app as stage one of the process. There is a note here which also says that if you're an Irish citizen, you do not need to apply to the settlement scheme. Irish citizens' rights are unaffected by Brexit, unlike everyone else, but you may apply to the scheme if you are Irish, and that's what I'm going to do myself. There is a note here about cost, and this may be confusing for people uh, because you will still be asked to pay if you apply before the 30th of March, despite the fact that the Prime Minister announced recently that the fees would be scrapped. That seems to be because the decision to ditch the fees was taken at the last minute. And it was always planned that there would be a £65 fee for adults and half that for children. But that was scrapped after this enormous test phase had already opened, so they couldn't remove the charging element from the online process. So the long and the short of it is, if you apply before the 30th of March 2019, you will be asked to pay a fee, but it will be refunded. Details of the refund process still to be decided. So that might factor into your decision as to when you apply, because if you apply after the 30th of March, they should have sorted it out and it will be just free. There'll be no paying a fee involved. All right, let us actually try to begin. And here we go. To start your application, download the Home Office app from the Google Play Store. Now really, you'll want to be visiting this link on your phone uh, because you'll want to install the app on your phone like the BBC News app or any other applications you might have, Candy Crush or whatever. But I can show you what it looks like on a browser screen. Uh, this is the app you'll need to download, EU Exit ID Document Check. It's showing up as already installed for me because it's installed on my phone, which is sort of linked to my computer. Um, but anyway, Unfortunately, I cannot show you the inner workings of the app on screen, even on my phone screen, because the security settings of it do not allow us to do a screen record. However, Nath, who has written the Settled Status article, has taken a number of photographs of the app in operation. So let's look at that. So here, there are a few introductory screens which I won't bother with, but what, uh, once you install the app and uh, open it up, 
but this is the first phase essentially um, first step you will need to take within the app this is a photograph of how the phone screen looks uh, and it says scan your passport so essentially it just wants you to hover your phone screen over the passport page of your passport uh, line it up in the box uh, shown on your phone screen and it will tell you once it has captured the image of your passport photo page or ID card if that is applicable you can see here the uh, confirmation page or screen on the app when it, you have success successfully scanned your passport it will also ask you possibly at an earlier stage and this is jumbled up I'm not sure about the ordering but anyway within the app you will be asked to enter a mobile phone number and an email address uh, I know there may be some people who are concerned about giving the home office their contact details and might be tempted just to you know make something up to get through this stage but you do need the mobile phone number to proceed uh, within the app and to log back in because they'll send you a confirmation code and you do need an email address to receive your decision by email so those do need to be your real contact details you can see that it will send you a pin number to confirm your mobile phone and that you will need to enter into the app just like online banking if you've ever done that anyhow the next stage after scanning your passport will be to physically place your phone on top of your passport the uh, it will then scan the biometric chip in it in some way that i don't begin to understand but in any case uh, you just need to close the passport physically place the phone on top of it the app will instruct you as to what to do uh, you can see here a photograph of Nath's phone sitting comfortably on top of her passport and the app is checking the information there I found with this that the top of my phone needed to be in contact with the passport somewhere near the chip near the chip or otherwise it, it wouldn't work for me I did have a bit of trouble with it initially so that is my top tip there top of the phone uh, ideally in contact with the passport not jutting off to the top there's a confirmation screen that that has happened in this example the third step is to scan your face so this is really just pointing the phone again while the app is in operation this is all happening on the phone screen in the app uh, point out your face and it will scan your face in some high-tech way there'll be uh, it, the screen will flash uh, to tell you that that's happening you need to sort of position your face within the box shown on the screen fairly self-explanatory again there's a confirmation page face scan successfully and the final stage within the app is to take a selfie uh, a normal photo this time unlike the sort of high-tech scan you just point the phone at your face uh, line up your face in the app or in the box shown on the screen should I say the guidance on this says to adopt a neutral expression um, a clear lighting maybe a plain background no sunglasses or anything like that so uh, think of it like taking a passport picture i suppose you want it to be fairly um neutral and uh, no pulling faces or anything like that so that is the app um after you have completed these steps the app will redirect you to a web page where you will complete the second part of the process which is the online application form so you can go straight there or you can log back in at a later stage which is what i'm going to do now from the website continue application having used the app now at this point you to log in to the system to continue you will need to enter some personal details that you've input via the app and I am going to pause this video at this juncture so that I can do that myself and log in without my passport number and date of birth being all over the internet. So bear with me one moment while I pause the video to log into the online part of the application. Now here we are in the online form aspect of the EU settlement scheme application. We have just skipped the login step so that my login details are not visible to you. Uh, but this is where you will land once you have logged in and you will see there are five sections to the application form identity application type residence in the uk criminal convictions and digital photo the identity and digital photo elements will show up as completed once you first arrive on this page because that has all been input via the app so that is 
already done. Uh, you can check uh, that it's the right um, information that's been captured if you wish. Um, but what you need to complete is these three sections here, application type, residence in the UK and criminal convictions. So let me just show you what those questions look like. I've done these before as you can see. The first question is about dual nationality. Do you have another citizenship as well as the one shown on your passport or ID card? If so, you would click yes and continue and tell the Home Office what that other country is for which you have a uh, citizenship. I don't, so I'm going to, well, <laughs> that's not true. I do have a dual nationality, which is British, uh, which is why I'm not actually going to submit this application at the end of this process, because the Home Office might not take it kindly that I have uh, lied at this particular point of the application form. Uh, but in any event, uh, for the purpose of the exercise, I'm going to click no and continue. Next question, do you have any previous nationalities? A citizenship that you no longer have, but you used to? Again, if so, do tell the Home Office that. Uh, I'm going to click no and continue. Do you have a valid UK permanent residence card? Now, a permanent residence card is a document issued under EU law, and you will know if you have one because you will have had to apply for one previously. Uh, a process something like this application, in fact, only a lot more cumbersome uh, and indeed uh, perhaps not expensive but it was certainly a lot more hassle than, than this application but it was, it was a similar thing you would have had to make an application to get a permanent residence card confirming that you have the right to live permanently in the UK because of your EU citizenship so if you have one you should uh, tell the Home Office yes I do have one um, there were some difficulties that some people found in an initial pilot of this scheme where people were saying, yes, I have a permanent residence card, when in fact they had a different kind of EU residence document, such as you can see here, registration certificates, or perhaps just a residence as opposed to a permanent residence card. Um, you check carefully if you do have an EU residence card, it may not be a permanent residence card. That's the only thing they are asking about here. So I don't have a permanent residence card. I'm going to click no and continue. Well, now we have a hold up because the system is slow, broken, who knows? So it may be that we want to fix this before going on, but I suppose it's just an indication that this might happen to you as well. Um, so I, instead of letting you sit here and uh, see a screen for ages, I'm going to pause the video again and try to fix this again. Just a good indication that the system is not perfect. Uh, we're back. It just took some time to load. The next question is, have you ever been granted indefinite leave to remain? So this is similar to the last question. It's asking, do you have a sort of existing permanent uh, status in the UK? But indefinite leave to remain has not been granted to EU citizens for many years. Um, it was replaced by permanent residence from the last question, essentially. And again, you will know if you have this, if you have indefinite leave to remain, the uh, system is telling us you'll usually have a stamp in your passport and it would be from a long time ago, realistically. So this will not apply to most people, but you may have ILR, particularly if you've been living in UK for a very long time and you applied for it back in the day so if you do have it uh, click yes and uh, it will ask you for the year if not click no and continue so we can review our answers to that section there at the end very easy in my case so let's just click continue so that's one section down the next is about residents in the UK so the first step is to find your address it's your current address. Now this is a standard sort of address lookup where you enter your postcode and click find address. It will be familiar to you if you use the internet to do pretty much anything, uh, to buy anything online for example. Uh, the So I'm just putting in this uh, central London postcode, click find address, and up comes the address for, in this case, the home office, uh, which I'm just using as an example rather than my real address. Um, there's also an option to add address manually if the postcode lookup should fail. So carry on. Next question is about have you ever been known by any other names? Uh, fairly self-explanatory maiden name or maybe you've changed your name legally. It will ask you what that other name uh, was. If you click yes, I'm going to click no and continue. 
Now, this is a particularly significant question about national insurance number. It's in the section on residence because your national insurance number will be used to automatically scan government databases to see if the government has records of you living in the UK already. And that will save you a lot of time later in the application if you have a national insurance number because you will not have to submit evidence of your residence if the Home Office finds that you are on the tax database for having paid tax or you are in the DWP system for having claimed benefits, then it will take that as evidence of residence for however many years you have you appear in those databases. So that is a, a sort of integral part really of this process. So if you do have a national insurance number, you can enter it there and that will uh, trigger those automated checks. Um, if you don't have one, then you can just tell them no. Um, I have entered this hypothetical national insurance number in the system just for the purpose of the exercise. I'm going to click continue. And that's a fairly short section. Uh, you can again review your answers uh, at the end of the section. So click continue. And then the last section we need to complete here is about criminal convictions. So the first one is asking you, have you ever been convicted of a criminal offence or are have you ever been arrested or charged with an offence uh, that you are currently on trial for? So in the UK or any other country. So this is a self-declaration. Uh, you should tell the Home Office about criminal offences and you can read up on the significance of those in our article. Uh, I won't go into it here. Uh, for present purposes, I have not. So no and continue. And then a terrifying question about whether you have ever supported, encouraged or been involved with various heinous activities. Again, this will not apply to many people, if any. I'm going to click no and continue. All right, end of section review. No criminality, no extremism for me, continue. So that is the end of the online application form. We will then click submit answers and there will be some security questions. You, you enter answers for um, sort of personal questions to be able to log back into the application if you I suppose forget your passport details or, or it's a sort of backup to get back into the system basically. Um, I've just put in some generic ones for the purpose of the exercise um, Toy Story is a wonderful film. Uh, so we'll go on to continue and here we have the declaration page. You will declare that the information you've given is correct to the best of your knowledge and note that you may be prosecuted if you deliberately uh, provide uh, false or misleading information, representations or documents. So this is the point at which I, I halt the live application because as mentioned, I am in fact a dual citizen with British nationality and I have not said that in the application and I do not want to actually submit this in case uh, there are uh, <laughs> heinous consequences uh, from the Home Office uh, who do not like being lied to. So uh, I cannot show you further in the application process in real time if you like, however, uh, Nath has got some more photographs of what happens after the declaration page. So back to our photographs. Um, so after the declaration page, there is the fee, which as mentioned, you will have to pay, but have refunded if you apply before the 30th of March, a bit cumbersome, but in, in any event, uh, that is the next stage. Um, it will ask you for a card or whatever else. There is the confirmation page for payment. And then the system will spit out a sort of preliminary result based on the automated checks of government databases about residents. So if there are five years of data showing, or more of data showing that you've been living in the UK um, on those databases, then you will get this result. You will be considered for settled status. Uh, you can see here the tax and benefit history with the Matthew indicate that you've been continuing resident in the UK for at least five years. So uh, it will then go on to a human decision maker who will check, I suppose, other aspects to do with uh, criminal convictions, for example, that might be a reason to refuse your application, but you will be in the frame for the full settled status. Now, at this point, if you do not have five years or more of uh, tax and benefit history, has been spat out by the automated checks, then you will have an opportunity to upload documents proving uh, that in fact you have been here you just don't show up in government systems 
Um, now, there is in caseworker guidance for this settlement scheme uh, at Annex A, this is linked to in Matt's article, a list of evidence that the Home Office will accept for the purposes of establishing your residence if those automated checks don't show you. So the list includes you know, bank statements, business accounts if you're self-employed, a letter from the employer, P60, P45 and so on. Uh, so if you do need to upload evidence of your residence, you can check what they prefer. Uh, there's also alternative evidence, uh, which will also do, but is not uh, as good as the preferred evidence, such as um, bank statements that don't cover the full year, um, pay slip, an invoice, a utility bill, a letter from a doctor, um, passport stamp, lots of other things, and then a list of unacceptable evidence. So that is uh, for people who do not have the uh, full five years in the, the automatic thing, at least if you like. Uh, now we can also show you what happens after the decision is taken. So, oh no, before that, in fact, um, Nath again has very kindly provided us with uh, the next stage of the process, which is after you submit this, um, application you get a certificate of application confirming that you've put it in a sort of holding reply if you like so that will come to your email address um, as soon as you've uh, filled in the online form uh, and you will also get a decision uh, on your application within if you're lucky a matter of days uh, to tell you whether you've been accepted for settled status or not uh, this is the obviously a positive decision letter that we, we sincerely hope most people get um, and a negative decision or a request for more information from a caseworker is sort of beyond the scope of this immediate video um, so we will end it there but i hope this has been useful and good luck with your application